Let's start today by giving plastics a hand. And you're probably surprised by that because it is so much more in vogue these days to diss on plastics. But you know what? Let's rewind a little bit. Let's go back to 1906. The first synthetic plastic ever made, Bakelite, by Leo Bakelin, Belgian chemist who emigrated to, to the US. What a wonderful material it was. It was used to make jewelry, insulation around electrical cables, insulation in transformers. They remember the telephones, the big black phones, heavy? You threw that at someone, they knew that they had been attacked. Not like the flimsy versions that we have today. You throw it at someone and boy, it just bounces off. It's hardly worth doing at all. After Bakelite, novel plastics like nylon, all of these took the world by storm, and then came all the polys, the polyethylenes, the polypropylenes, the polymethylmethacrylates, the polyvinyl chlorides. And we were basking in the limelight. You remember the classic scene from The Graduate when uh, young Benjamin is corralled in the corner of the room by a family friend at his graduation party, whispers into his ear, plastics. We were swimming in plastics and we're doing that happily. Today, of course, there are concerns. Certainly, there are plastics we don't really need, I mean, let's face it, I could do without my polyethylene bunny. I could do without my polypropylene Superman. I can certainly do without my polyvinyl chloride duck, at least this one. Uh, but what about all the other things that we use? Today, our drugs come packaged in plastics, our cosmetics come packaged in plastics, our creams, scotch tape is plastic. We go into the laboratory and we have unbreakable plastic wear. We use plastic in our safety glasses. I can teach my students about molecular structure without having plastic models. And I can tell you all about the magic of chemistry because I've recorded it on polycarbonate, which of course is a plastic. There are all kinds of uses. Our hospitals today could not function without plastic tubing. Virtually every piece of equipment in the hospital makes use of plastic. Even our food supply. You know that I love my berries. I love my blackberries. I love my raspberries. Well, I couldn't possibly have those come all the way from Chile or from California without the polyethylene terephthalate container in which they come. All of these are recyclable. Unfortunately, in North America, only about 9% of all of our plastics get recycled. We certainly should be doing a lot, lot better than that. Now, we've seen those terrible pictures of what happens when plastic gets into the environment. We've seen the pictures of the turtle with the straw up its nose. We've seen dolphins entangled in, in plastic nets. Uh, we've seen albatrosses cut open with all kinds of plastic in their stomach. This is just terrible. We have to do something about that, about the tremendous amount of plastic that ends up in the ocean. Roughly one dump truck full of plastic gets dumped into the ocean just about every hour of the day, which is an incredible thing. We have to somehow cut down on that. Uh, how do we cut down on that? Well, some plastics have been sort of portrayed as being monstrous. And these are the single-use plastics, like the single-use spoons, the single use forks, single-use straws. These are the things that we can quite readily eliminate. Of course, they can be recycled, but it's better just to use material that doesn't need to be thrown out, that doesn't need to be recycled. We have spoons that we can use over and over again. If you're bent on drinking with a straw, well, we can have a steel straw. You don't have to take a plastic one and throw it away. So, it is certainly possible to recycle and to, to reuse, but we obviously have to be very careful about how we use plastics. It's not a question of plastics being good or bad, it's how we use them. Now you've heard a great deal about the plastic bags. And these of course end up in the environment, sometimes tragically they end up in trees, they end up in the ocean. Well, they are eminently reusable, eminently reusable. This one I have had for months. I take it home, I shop with it, and I bring it back again after I've unpacked it. It's absolutely no problem to the environment as I keep reusing it. But there is one measure that we can all take, very simple one, and it is this. This is an environmental criminal. The amount of oil that is used to make these bottles, 
is terrible. And most of them don't get recycled. And there is no need, certainly in the Western world, to be drinking bottled water. The stuff that comes out of our tap is very, very good. If you are bent on getting these, make sure that you recycle them. However, I don't think we need these. I think we can get rid of those. If you think that you need to be drinking water every minute of every day, of course you can use a bottle like this, which is eminently reusable. So there we go, there's the, the story of, of, of plastics. It's not a question of plastics being good or bad, it's a question of which plastics, how we can recycle them, uh, how we can make sure that they don't end up in the ocean. But keep in mind that modern life could not exist without uh, plastics. So I have no problem in giving plastics a hand. However, not all plastics are necessary. This one, for example, we can do without.